Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. Now, we wasn't planning on putting out an episode today, but after reading Unai Emery's interview with France Football, I felt like I had to. Um, I know many of you will have been well aware of my feelings towards Unai Emery, not just right at the end, but a little bit earlier on as well in his tenure where I didn't feel that he was the right man for the job. I couldn't see the progress. I couldn't understand the plan. Um, I was unhappy with, you know, the way he was doing things, his approach to certain situations. And I took a lot of stick for that. Um, And I know I keep going on about it, but I feel like I I deserve that right um, after getting sort of so much abuse in my direction um, as a result of my opinions on Unai Emery. Now, I've read this interview. Um, I'm going to take you through some bits and pieces uh, from it, uh, some of the comments, and I I want to just give my take on it um, because this is an interview that I've got to say it it rubbed me up the wrong way. And I don't normally take sort of offence to things like that, comments from previous players or previous managers, because I think, you know, there's always a, a hidden agenda behind those comments. And in this case, I think this is, Unai Emery desperately trying to put himself back in the managerial shop window, if you were. Um, I think that's what he's trying to do. I think he's, he feels it's probably time now to start looking for another job. And so therefore he has to shift some of the blame of what happened at Arsenal onto other people. Now, am I sitting here saying that Unai Emery was solely to blame for things not going well at Arsenal? Absolutely not. And there probably is some truth in some of the things that he said. There probably are some comments that you know you will read and, and you will say, you know what, actually, he maybe had a point here. Um, so I'm not denying that there, there probably is some substance to what Unai Emery is saying. But there, a lot of what Unai Emery is saying is stupid. And it's just somebody passing the buck onto somebody else, in my opinion. And so I wanted to take you through those bits and pieces and deliver my take uh, on the situation. So it was an interview with France Football. If you haven't already seen it, it's been reported by multiple um British media outlets as well. So you'll be able to find that. Um, He talks about Arsenal being on a downward slope for two years before he arrived. You can't deny that. Arsenal were on a downward slope. And that's ultimately, isn't it, why Arsene Wenger was moved on. And people will say that Arsene Wenger walked away, but we all know in our heart of hearts that Arsene Wenger was given a little bit of a nudge. It was Arsene, we don't think we can take you any further. You could take us any further, sorry. We don't want to pull the plug. We don't want to sack you, given everything you've done for the club. But it's time to go, mate. And that's what happened. I think we all agree on that. I think you'd be very um, hard-pressed to find somebody who disagrees with that. Um, So Emery started talking about the club being on a downward slope. He says, we stopped this fall and even began to rebuild the club with the Europa League final and fifth place in the league. Only one point off Tottenham, despite the fact we took just one point in our final five matches. Now, in regards to the Europa League final comment, he will, of course, use that in his advantage when he's making this argument. And yes, he did get us to a Europa League final. But what I would say is the season before, Arsenal went to the Europa League semi-final and had they not met Atletico Madrid, who were leagues, miles and classes above anybody that Unai Emery's Arsenal met in the competition, then Arsenal would have been in the final the year before as well. Yes, it was a small step forward, but it wasn't as big a step, in my opinion, as Unai Emery's making it out to be. He says we finished in fifth place in the league and we were only one point off of Tottenham, despite the fact we took just one point in our final five matches. Well, we wouldn't have finished the point behind Spurs if we'd taken more points out of our final uh, five games. And I know that sounds like a really obvious thing to say, But Unai Emery's own arrogance and Unai Emery's indecision and his, you know, obsession with tinkering and messing about with the team is what made us miss out in the first place because he made those changes against Crystal Palace. And for me, that was the catalyst to everything that went wrong in the end of the season. It just set the wrong tone. And from then on, Arsenal completely capitulated. So he talks about the fact we were just a point off off of Spurs. We could have been well clear of Spurs because they didn't have a great season either. We could have been well clear of them. Um, Their eyes were on the Champions League final towards the end. They had an almighty drop off as well. And that's why we were so close to them. It's more of a reflection on, on how bad they were and how bad some of the teams around us were rather than Arsenal being better than they had been previously. That's my take on it anyway. 
He says, we had Champions League qualification in our grasp and it went wrong in the end, but it was a good season and we had this notion of continuing to improve. But we lost four of our captains. Laurent Koscielny, Pedacek, Aaron Ramsey and Nacho Monreal. Aaron Ramsey, who, yes, the club may have decided to move on. and The club decided not to make the offer um, or to withdraw the offer that was initially on the table for his contract extension. But Mr. Emery, for half a season, you didn't select Aaron Ramsey in your side. You didn't think he was good enough. But now that it suits you, you're pointing to Aaron Ramsey as a huge loss. Lauren Koscielny. What happened there? Lauren Koscielny refused to go on a pre-season tour. That's not what leaders do. There must have been some promises, some guarantees given perhaps by the club, maybe even prior to Unai Emery's arrival. But you're almost mourning somebody who displayed all the wrong values and somebody who, let's face it, was thrown back into the side towards the end of that season out of desperation because he was nowhere near fit enough at any point. Pedacek a veteran goalkeeper. Yes, um, you know, you could say he was one of the natural leaders given his experience, etc., etc. But, you know, he's a goalkeeper at the end of the day. And then, you know, for me, he was never going to be a longer term solution for Arsenal. He came in, um, you know, his best days were behind him when he joined the club. So to be building with Pedacek in mind for me made no sense. Um Nacho Monreal, again, another one that probably wanted to leave the club himself. But then you've got to ask the question, why do these players want to leave the club? Is it because they don't believe in, in what they're being coached? Is it because they didn't believe in Unai Emery? And to a certain degree, you have to say that's true because there has been a significant upturn in the attitude of certain players since he's gone. There were dressing room fallouts under Unai Emery. There were... Uh, tactical changes that made you sit there scratching your head for hours and hours and hours on end because they didn't make sense to the average Arsenal fan. He then said, taking all of that into account, we needed time to succeed with our transition to a new Arsenal, which is what I wanted. He then went on to say, um, he, he didn't, he, he basically tried to pass the buck onto everybody else. And that was what was really frustrating reading this. Um, you know, he talked about players' um, attitudes and he talked about all different things. He talked about professionals not giving enough. And for me, you know, it just feels like a bit of a cop-out. Now, do I think that those players all displayed the perfect attitude during Unai Emery's tenure? Absolutely not. Does he maybe have a point to a degree? That's what I was saying at the very beginning. There has to be some truth to it, but I think he's exaggerated that truth. And I think he's used this as an opportunity to pass the buck on to somebody else to try and put himself back in that managerial shop window. Now, I didn't like Unai Emery as it was, um, particularly in the last few months of his Arsenal tenure. So this has only uh, pushed me further away uh, from liking the Spaniard, unfortunately. But then you see the comments that are coming out of the camp now under Mikel Arteta, where the team are in Dubai, the team are training in the warm weather, the team are, you know, all saying how they understand what's asked of them tactically. They're all saying that they feel more united. They all feel like they're improving. You never used to hear those noises under Unai Emery. And the interviews that started coming out after his departure were damning. David Lewis, Socrates, all talking about how the team weren't fit enough, how the team weren't good enough, how it wasn't clear what they were being asked to do on a weekly basis. So just to conclude, it's a disgusting interview, in my opinion. It's an interview from somebody who, as I keep saying, is desperate to get back into management. He's desperately looking to pass the buck on to somebody else. But what I will say is, when you look at it logically, there probably is some truth to it. There are some points that probably are there. But is it classy for Unai Emery to come out and say this now? No. It smells of desperation. Unai Emery's interview smells of pure desperation from somebody 
who is desperate to repair his damaged reputation and get back into football management. Let me know what you guys think, of course, in the comments section below. I'm always interested to hear uh, you guys' take on all the subjects we discuss here. If you're listening via the audio, leave us a review, subscribe. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit the like button on the video. Leave us a comment too. And uh, if you're not already, of course, make sure you're subscribed. We'll be back very soon with more. We're going to be bringing you our Premier League debate show uh, later on this evening. So stay tuned for that. We'll be talking about Pep Guardiola. We've got some great panellists coming on and we're going to be debating whether or not he still is the Premier League's number one manager. Um, so plenty to come your way. Simply Serie A will be out in the morning as well, which you can check out via all the usual audio platforms. The link is in the description. Uh, so until next time, take care. Ciao.